Through all of the Asian drama TV series and films that I've watched, sadly, there are big disappointments. This is the list of those disappointments where I was really excited into getting into the story because at the start, the summaries, the premise, they were all very promising. And then we get into the middle of the episode and it was just really such a letdown. This is the list of those letdowns and those disappointments. Abyss is a sci-fi drama series released back in 2019 by TVN and Netflix. Our main character is Cha Min. Cha Min is a rich guy who is ugly. Most of the storyline of the first episodes presses on that the fact that Cha Min is ugly, he is worthless, and no girls would ever want to be with him. Ironically, he starts off in a cliff in an edge of a building where he tries to commit suicide because his fiance left him and he is now heartbroken. The moment he commits suicide, he dies, but then two alien spirits come in and try to resurrect him because he wouldn't have died because if not for them of an accident bumping into him or whatever. Anyway, they use a mystic ball, a mystic magical ball to resurrect Cha Min into a person who reflects the true spirit within him. And the true spirit with him is actually really a handsome guy. He is not ugly at all. I usually talk about main characters at the start with other reviews because these are the people, these are the characters that I will invest my time into. They better be good or they better be bad, but the gist of it is they better be entertaining. They have to be bringing something that's really excellent, that's really different. But with the case of Cha Min, he didn't really give us anything that I could, you know, enjoy with or have fun with or hate with. At the start of the drama, I got the sense that Cha Min is ugly. Whenever he tries to get into a relationship with a girl or try to at least be friends with them, he is turned down. He is ugly and the series is letting me know that he is that and only that. I get that he is ugly, but other than being ugly, I didn't really get anything from him, despite the fact that he is rich. He's ugly and rich. Why not get Botox or why not get surgery, plastic surgery to change your face if you're that much rich? I don't get it. If that's the problem, why go through all the, the death defying scenes, the suicide and the mystic ball just for you to fix your face? I didn't get that. Beyond the character being rich and ugly, I didn't really get any sense of other qualities I could latch onto. Does he work a lot? Is he a workaholic? Does he have good points? Is he a good person? Is he a good son? Is he a good lover? I don't get it. There's nothing else for me to latch on. There's no qualities for me to believe that this main character is the serving of my time and I would root for him and I would love him or hate him. There's just nothing, nothing for me to go on to. And that's the problem. When I was still trying to get a sense of who the character really is, he switches bodies and now he's like super hot. Okay, we get that. But I don't really know enough of the character's trials and ordeals for me to be invested in his story, in his evolution. And now he's like looking super hot and I don't know if I'm supposed to feel happy for him. It's just, I didn't feel the conflict and now you're giving me a resolution and it's kind of just passing me. I'm supposed to feel something, but really I don't. So I asked myself, am I gonna watch a drama about a hot guy who doesn't know he's hot and he's slowly coming into terms with that and I didn't really get the reason why he's thinking this way or how it came to that. It just feels a little bit off. I'd rather watch other dramas with actual hot guys with actual hot stories. Then we have Seyon. She is cocky, overconfident, and feels very superior about her looks. I'm not really getting her character. There's nothing for me to hold on to. There's no good quality of her that I like besides her looks. That's it. 
So I'm leaning more of hating her and disliking her. I wish in the story that there was something bad that will happen to the character, all because she's a bit overbearing. Then down the episode, she dies. She is resurrected and she has now a different body. And when I saw that and the character was having issues, she was having problems, she was breaking down, I was happy. As far as I was concerned, the character has already been resolved in my books. There was no issue because she deserved that coming and I was happy. So end of story. We got aliens, spirits, resurrection balls, all great elements indicative of a great storyline. But sadly, the main characters didn't deliver as I hoped. So after episode one, this just dropped. He is Psychometry is another sci-fi drama series released in 2019. The main character is about a young boy who is traumatized by an incident in the past and has now powers to see the last moments of the dead. At the very start of the series, it was a little bit confusing because we have all these explosions, these backstories, and all of these characters all joined in and it was kind of confusing on who to start with or how to piece things together. Fortunately, the main character got me through. His storyline was what made me stay from the first couple of minutes down to the end of the first episode. And that's great. But for all of the other characters, particularly the guy who was supposed to be his adoptive brother and that woman who is helping him be a psychometry, there's just nothing for me to go on to with them. I don't see any moral drivers, motivators in their characters for me to feel like I know these people, that I could relate to them, that I would like to see where their story, the journey lets them to. It's just, there's nothing for me. Then we get to Yoon Jae-in. At the start, she demonstrates that she is a stone cold peach. And we get that, she is a peach. So at the start, as a viewer, I started hating this character because she is very rude. She feels like she knows everything and nobody likes a know-it-all. And that's what I was feeling watching this character. And then I see her have a soft side when I'm really hating her and then I see her crying and then switching into a really strong personality. It's somehow very confusing for me because I don't know whether I would hate her or love her or root for her. It's just really, I don't know how to feel about this character. It would have been nice if we could have seen her be soft and be vulnerable towards the end. Let us feel established that she is a peach and she is someone deserving of our hate and our attention and disliking her. That would have been nice if we could have seen her at that point in the first couple of episodes really being a peach. And then later down on, we see her being vulnerable. That's totally accept acceptable. And there's a pace, a slowness into the story where we get to slide into different emotions. And I would really love that. But the reality is we get to see a character who is a peach at the start and then soft and then crying and then peach again. It's just, it's confusing. And I wanted to be not confused and enjoy the story. What's more is when Jin accuses our main character of peeping inside the toilet, the hoodie that looks like the same as the other guy. And then the phone call that terribly seems appropriate for that kind of scene. It's just all of it feels a little too convenient and a little bit too forced in the plot. And it just feels like an excuse for them to meet up in a bad way. And it's just really not fun. It was ugly. It was poorly executed. And I wasn't just really having an entertaining time. Throughout all of the scenes of the first episodes, I, I'm confused. I don't know if this is a love story or a sci-fi. It just goes from that point to the other. And it feels like all of the plot that's supposed to be distributed all throughout the drama was crammed into the first episode and I'm not enjoying it. 
Just give us one storyline at the time so we can focus on that and enjoy it, please. But that doesn't happen at all. It would have been nice if it was strictly a love story. These two people have, you know, chemistry and then this one is sad and he uses his powers to get to know more of that person, try to get on her good books. It, that doesn't even happen. And then in sci-fi, maybe we can get a guy who is stumbling on his powers, who doesn't know how to control them. But because there is a guy out there or there's a reason for him to solve a mystery, to solve an accident back in the past, he tries his best to tame these powers and you know ultimately finds out who the culprit is. Like Detective Conan in the anime series. It's just, it doesn't work. The King's Avatar was released in 2019 by Tencent. The premise starts with a pro gamer who leaves his gaming company to start anew on his own. I've actually read the novel and seen the anime series where this was based off, and I really enjoyed the story. I was fairly excited when I found out that this was in live action, and I couldn't wait to actually see the whole thing. Then I found out that the main character was starred by Yang Yang, and I love Yang Yang from Love O2O, and he was really good at that. Upon watching the drama, the first scene was open with a lot of subtitles, a lot of different characters being introduced, and a lot of text flying around. It was honestly such a mess. I couldn't grab a hold of what was going on or what was the story and who were the main characters? Who are the people am I supposed to root for? I don't get it. I was just bombarded with a lot of information and I don't have the tools to sift through all of these things and actually get the story. It was just really sad. I read novels as a pastime. So my reading comprehension is above average, but with all of these texts flying around, it's just so hard to keep up. So I said to myself, maybe this was just a rough start. Maybe there's going to be exciting scenes, more action, interesting storylines, gripping characters, and it would be all worth it. You know, confusing at the start, but really worth it. Then we went to the gameplay and the action scenes. And all of that power and all of that characters flying around, all of those weapons swinging and all of these things coming at me, switching different angles, spanning of cameras to left, right, and then twisting it all over. And it's just, oh my God, my head hurts. I was dizzy. For 12 minutes into the episode, I was dizzy already. And I never get sickness or, or dizziness and nausea when I'm watching a drama. This is the first time that I was nauseated and I was like, oh my God, am I going to puke? And I actually kind of did, but nothing came out because I didn't really eat that day that much. Then I realized maybe it's just because of me, maybe because I'm tired. So what I did was I stopped the film, stopped the drama, and then I went to bed. Then the next day, I played it again. And guess what happened? I started puking. I started having dizziness and nausea. And oh my God, it just, it was bad. And I've watched gaming dramas before. I've watched all of these online stuff, gaming stuff. I've, I'm a gamer. I've done casual gaming and console games and mobile games, and I never get nauseated except now. I don't get it. It's just, ugh. If you have other dramas that you were excited to see, but then put it down for different reasons, let me know in the comment down below. If you found this video helpful and enjoyable, do give me a like. If you wanna see more reviews of Asian drama TV series and films in the future, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button. That's it.